Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Fumulin from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Well, Reddit, uh, message board about Wall Street and GameStop, that has caught headlines. You know, something big must be happening when the late night talk shows are making jokes about a stock. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, it's, it's just a giant feeding frenzy. I, I, I mean, I was talking to somebody early today, like the stock market has this great way of sucking people in and getting them caught up in the wrong kind of positions or assets or stocks. And that's what the GameStop play is. Same with the AMC and the silver sector. We got the Reddit group talking about it, and the prices go straight up and explode. And it's almost like one of those bug zapper lights where you turn it on at night and they're like blue and the bugs fly toward They're just naturally, they have to go towards it. They have to go check it out until they get killed, right? And that's what these big stocks that go straight up these and go straight back down again do to average traders. They, they lure them in and people say, wow, look at all this easy money. And then they pile in and just get absolutely slaughtered. It is, you know, these stocks are not for normal people. These are for day traders really only. They are a huge gamble. You don't want to hold positions overnight. Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, I got people crawling out of the woodwork sending me text messages. I'm like, who is this? And their, their, their question is, you know, what do you think of GameStop? What do you think of Silver? And, uh, that's like the, the sign that, okay, everyone at the farthest corners of this planet is now interested in getting in on it. It's gotta be over. It's the same thing I had when, when uh, Bitcoin hit 20,000 a couple of years ago. It's just your phone starts to light up from people who are not traders. They're not even investors. Uh, they just have to get involved, right? So that's what we're seeing over the last couple of days in this market is it's finding a way to attract all these uh, this money into it. But um, it's going to be an uphill battle for those uh, traders. Well, sure. I remember when Bitcoin hit 20,000 because it was on my birthday three years ago. And everybody mm. at my birthday party was saying, do you have your Bitcoin? I got Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at 20 grand. You can't <laughs> miss. And, and I always heard, I think it was perhaps from you, when they start talking about something at a cocktail party, that's the time to bail. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You and I talked about this, I think, a couple of years ago. That's exactly it. It was right around New Year's Eve. Everyone was was drinking and literally ordering, buying Bitcoin with their phones on the beach where we were. I was like, this is crazy. And the people buying them are were a lot older than me. I mean, I'm like, these people can barely use computers, yet they're buying Bitcoin on their phone with a drink in their other hand. That was like, it blew my mind. I'm like, this has got to be a top. <laughs> well, uh, Bitcoin itself, uh, just a few weeks ago, was doing the same thing. It's the same kind of mania surrounding Bitcoin as there was uh, three weeks ago. Yep, exactly same thing. Yep. Uh, but is that phenomena happening? And when people, uh, do join these things, what usually happens? It, it usually happens with the bubble bursting, right? That all that momentum of everyone piling in and everyone's in the mindset where they're not planning on selling. So there's very limited, uh, supply, yet everyone wants to only buy. It's just the buy side driving price up. But as soon as you get one big red bar, uh, and it just starts to spook people a bit. They start thinking, maybe I'll sell a little bit. And and it just kind of slowly builds from no one wanting to sell their positions that they love in Bitcoin or GameStop or whatever it is to eventually a whole bunch of them start thinking, I need to start selling some. It could start to top. And then all that momentum shifts from all buyers to all sellers, and it drops so fast that everyone panics, and they all just sell it at whatever price they can get for it because they're panicking. And they drive the price straight back down again. And so that's what we saw in GameStop. We saw in silver, silver miners. Um, it's just, it's just the mentality. It's just a momentum surge of everyone wanting to buy. And then suddenly they get a little spooked and then they're all like, I want out. I want out. 
So it's a roller coaster. Uh, usually, now these are purely speculators. They're not really investors, are they? Right. Yeah. Exactly. There, there are people searching for that excitement, that thrill. Um, that's what you know. That's why trading is, is so addicting, and that's why the the COVID crash last year in March brought in millions and millions of new traders is because people were talking about how they're making ten, twenty, thirty, or a hundred thousand dollars a day uh, day trading, and it just the volatility was there. It could totally be done, but if you're on the wrong side of that, you know, you blow your account up very quickly. But it just brings these people in uh, who don't really know a whole lot about the markets. They definitely don't understand position sizing, risk management. They don't know the risk they're taking by getting into that type of market. It's the exact market you should step back from um, if you want to, you know, maintain your wealth or you know you got to really tread lightly in that type you, you need to trade small positions not go you know ramming into it and going full speed with big positions are a lot of the people who got into markets uh after the march crash the same people who would have gone to casinos but they can't go to casinos right now because most of them are shut down i would think so i mean i wouldn't really say uh, people who get into trading are so much gamblers i would think they're um if they're trading stocks, I mean, they're, they're aggressive, obviously. They, it would make sense if they like to gamble with the stocks, with the fast movements. They would, they'd probably be more inclined to be a gambler or they might like it. But, you know, I typically find people who get into the stock market typically a little more methodical. They they have some logic. they got some reasoning behind what they're doing. And um, they're not just kind of just flat-out gamblers. But uh, there's, there's no doubt the amount of people that moved into this market, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of gamblers and a lot of those scratching win ticket players in there. <laughs> we'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, with uh, this play on GameStop and Silver Scene as pure speculation that likely will blow up in people's faces, are is the smart money going someplace else right now? Yeah, uh, yeah obviously money is it has it just vaporized out of those Reddit plays. All the money has been pretty much given back. The value of price has dropped uh, dramatically. We are seeing some hot pockets in the stock market. Their technology is definitely leading the way, especially small cap stocks. We see money piling into the Russell 2000, which are the small caps, and then definitely the tech sector within those are on fire. And we're seeing some interesting, um, there's some sector ETFs that are showing some strong strength, uh, going forward. There's a, a, an innovation ETF where there are all kinds of really interesting technology company, uh, companies in there. But we're, we're seeing the biotech really start to pick up speed and give it a new signal as well. I think we could see the uh, the biotech sector kind of break free and really and have a, a pretty significant run over the next uh, couple of weeks. So there's between tech and biotech, it feels a lot kind of like we're stepping back to what happened last February, or I guess it would be more like March, April, where tech and, and healthcare and those things really took off and did exceptionally well. So we're seeing life come back in those areas uh, going forward here. Any particular utilities that uh, are gaining attention? Oil and gas lines or uh, power companies? Yeah, there there is. You know, the utilities is, is not one that most people like to really talk about. It's not that exciting of a sector. It's one of the most boring sectors ever, actually. But it does give us some, some early warning signs uh, of when the stock market might get into a correction. Now, it, Utilities has actually been giving uh, some buy signals 
uh, over the last couple of weeks, it's starting to firm up and, and showing signs of strength. It's a, it's having a strong week so far. And if it does start to continue this trend higher, we start to see utilities rally to the highs we saw back in November. It's actually going to be a red flag and a warning sign because we tend to see big, big money, like institutional money, when they start to get nervous and they know they're going to be unloading shares and they know other big firms are going to be unloading shares. We tend to see that smart money move into these defensive sectors like utilities. And um, we saw this last year in February. Utilities broke out and had a big run, and that happened just before the stock market crashed. And we've seen this happen time and time again if you go back in history. So um, when I look at the utility charts, if it starts to rally over the next week or two, that's going to be a really big red flag that, hey, I think we're seeing defensive money move out of some of these sectors. They're moving into utilities. Something's going to pay a dividend no matter what happens. You know, we're still going to need running water, electricity. Those are really solid companies. Um, the other thing I want to uh, mention here is that when I look at the list of about 45 sectors that I look at, a lot of them, almost half of them have turned negative. They're, they're, they're telling us that investor money, big money has stopped flowing into them and that um, other defensive plays like gold, um, utilities, bonds are, are starting to actually hold up over the last few days better than these sectors. And so when half the sectors are, are given kind of a sell signal, that is also a red flag that this market rally is on, on fewer legs. There's less power behind it, and it could collapse uh, very quickly. So that's one thing I think everyone should keep their eyes open for is uh, the utilities rallying over the next week or two, and or potentially a little bit longer, but over the next few weeks, and to, uh, to see what a lot of sectors are doing, how many sectors are making new highs versus how many um, are, are floundering and starting some downtrends. Transports traditionally also give some warning. What's going on with them? The, the transportation uh, sector has been, um, it's had a little bit of a pullback recently, but, it, you know, it's its lost a lot of its upward momentum. It's done a little bit of damage. It's trading below the 50-day moving average. It really needs to recoup it in the next, um, uh, more or less by the end of this week, ideally. Um, if the transportation index fails to recover, that's a sign that there's there's some broad market weakness. That means people are expecting transportation to be down. That means they think there's going to be fewer products shipped and sold. Uh, so the transportation index leads the market, and that's the one thing where you've got to keep your eye on is where the small caps are going, where the transportation is are going. Um, there's a very mixed market here. Transportation is negative. Small caps are positive. Uh, so that's that's the one thing that everyone's got to be aware of is the market really doesn't know where it wants to go right now, but the trend is still up. And I think it's going to get volatile, and we'll see a correction here probably by the end of February. When the market gets uh, frothy at the mouth, it's the same as a rabid animal, kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll probably start to see uh, more signs of weakness. I mean, we've seen the VIX have a bunch of intraday spikes over the last month and a half. The VIX spikes intraday, and then by the end of the day, it closes back down, and most people don't realize there's these waves of fear going through the market. And that's that's investor sentiment slowly shifting from being super bullish all the time to now they're like having these little, you know, their doubts about maybe I should, you know, sell some of my position. And, and so we're starting to see that. And that's when this momentum is going to shift is when we start to see that market start to head down. We're going to see all those people who are buyers start to unload and it's going to create a market correction, which is perfectly fine. The market is is in need of one, I think, if we want to continue to uh, keep this bull market in place. We'll have more with Chris Vermillion right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, uh, anything going on with oil and gas? Yeah, well, we've seen uh, the the energy sector's been 
been struggling a little bit, uh, but just recently we saw crude oil have a big pop and a break to the upside in the last two trading days, uh, really coming back to life. We have some pretty good upside targets. You and I talked uh, about a month and a half ago, and the chart pattern was saying we're, we should be looking for 61 to roughly $64 per barrel. Uh, right now, crude on the continuous contract is at 54 so there's a lot of upside potential. It just broke to a new multi-month high. Um, uh, I really, I really like the energy sector here. It's coming back to life. Now, if we were to look at the energy sector stocks themselves versus crude, they have been underperforming and they're just not really getting the traction here yet. Now, they're, they're in a downtrend. I think they're going to need another, a few more trading sessions to, to prove that money's going to go in here because at this point, uh, there's a constant stream of selling in the XLE. Um, so, We'll see if, the, if these gold or sorry, these energy stocks start to rally and start to break out, then I think we're really going to see crude go all the way up to that uh, $64 per barrel very quickly. Uh, but at this point, that breakout in crude is uh, a little bit weak in terms of the underlying stocks. Typically, we want to see energy stocks break out first, and then we see crude oil break. So we're not seeing that speculative money pile into the leverage plays on energy right now. Uh, it's really just moving into crude itself, and the speculative plays just don't have that interest. So um, it's a little bit of a struggle, and this is this is what falls back on. The transportation index is struggling. 50% of the, the sectors are trading lower over the last couple of weeks and starting downtrends. Um, the energy stocks are not you know, in uniform with what crude oil is doing. Uh, really, with those energy stocks should be performing very well. And, of course, we've seen precious metals start to perk up and move higher, that is an indication there's some fear. So we got a lot of mixed market signals, and um, right now this week is really a week to almost sit back and let the markets digest and give us a better understanding of where it wants to go next because it really is a 50-50 bet here of which way this market's going to go uh, by the end of the week and, and next week. Do you think hedge fund managers are scared or have learned any kind of lesson from the GameStop Reddit people? I, I, I would think so. I mean, I know some of my subscribers are worried about it, about putting in trailing stops on some of our trades, because if you don't put, if you, if you sell some of your position, but you don't adjust your protective stop, uh, to, to reduce those shares so that, uh, as it comes down and triggers, you'd end up in a short position. It's definitely top of mind of traders and, and most likely fund managers. I actually did a talk earlier this week, a uh, presentation on uh, managing risk and positions. And we talked about GameStop and how it's unbelievable. It still blows my mind, unless I'm totally missing something here, but it blows my mind that a, a hedge fund can let one cheap little stock uh, that they went short blow up their entire uh, account and they have to bring in funding and they lose like three billion dollars like where is their position money management risk risk management in there like how can they let that to, you know blow up all the investors money because somebody thinks they're better than the market that they can you know take this massive bet and then they double down and they triple down and then they blow up um it's it's definitely made it top of mind and um individual investors i think are definitely shaken and it's a, it's a great learning lesson. I mean, for that to happen is great. There's so many new traders in this market. Uh, hopefully everyone kind of learns from it that uh, shorting in a raging bull market uh, and putting all your eggs in one basket and, and doubling down and tripling down is, uh, you know, a definite no-no. Yes, as people, they keep calling themselves the investment professionals and they get whipped by a bunch of amateurs. <laughs> exactly. I, I love I love it, though. I love seeing... Um, the people fight back and give a taste to the, the big funds and the, and the manipulators uh, of the price and, and catching these short soft side. I mean, it is pretty cool to see it happen. And what really is, is, is frustrating though is silver has this great big run and then suddenly, um, they're starting to do investigations saying they think there's manipulation in the rally. Yet they never ever do an investigation if silver falls. You know, dramatically, uh, it's it's and and it's been proven, and people have been caught for manipulating silver prices. But finally, silver goes up. They're trying to run the shorts out. Yet the financial system, which is supposed to be free, yet I think it's played by a couple big uh, masters, more or less, are are upset that their shorts are getting offside in a big way for silver. So it's it's not a free market, unfortunately. There, it's it's pretty wild. But the the small people are piling in and working together to 
give a taste of, of what it's like to be manipulated out of trades to the big players. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Always a pleasure. My guest has been Chris Fearmullen from the technicaltraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Find us on Twitter at howstreet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.